So if strength, if strength training is what we're saying is the most useful, we can spend our time doing. Mm -hmm. How would someone, say someone like myself, a 30 year old intermediate lifter, uh, increase his longevity? And he has no um, interest in competitive lifting. He just wants to be a strong, capable human being. Right. Well, uh, the way 30-year-olds die is not from heart disease or cancer. The way 30-year-olds die is in accidents. I guess my longevity of lifting. Oh, just, your, longevity, of, of li your longevity in a barbell sport. Of just my hobby of weightlifting for myself. And also oh, longevity, if you have any cool advice. Well... All right. Well, that's a different. That's two different questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said longevity, which generally means lifespan. Right. Okay. Now, if what kills thirty-year-olds is not chronic disease, it's not heart attacks. Typically, it's not cancer. It's not unfortunate. I mean, they happen statistically, but they're not. That's not what usually kills thirty-year-olds. What usually kills thirty-year-olds? Automobiles. So quit driving. I don't, never own a car in my life. Well, there you are. <laughs> you don't go anywhere. <laughs> you don't do anything. It sounds to me like you're going to be. Sounds to me like you're going to get to be about 110. But why in the hell would you want to do that? I'd rather be dead. So that's actually my. I don't know. I have this. Um, I uh, talk a lot with uh, Tony about this. I always have this idea that I want to live long and. Just kind of the, the middle way, you know, kind of live to be 100 and not, you know, just kind of be where other people tend to want to go big, get as, you know, big and strong as possible. Do you see there's any, is there ever any, um, you're a boring mother. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I like to do the same thing every, anyway. You don't like to grab life by the tits. <laughs> I think everyone has their own, it, yeah. I do. I do like to grab life by the tits. <laughs> I guess that looks different for everybody. I don't know. I've never had that approach. Well, do you thing. think performance? Do you think going for ultimate performance at all ever um, opposes ultimate performance? Well, and just, your middle way is incompatible. Listen, I'm saying. So, well, that those are incompatible concepts. Okay. Incompatible concepts. So, me trying to get strong, putting weight. I got an idea. What's, what's get your, idea? your testosterone level checked. <laughs> Maybe something's wrong with it. Your lifespan in the Barvel Sports is described by that curve we talked about for two and a half hours, right? Now, that's just the natural history of human adaptation is described by that curve. <clears throat> You're at some point along the upward slope of that curve. What typically happens to truncate that effect is an injury of some sort. So you're going along, you're productively training, and something happens. Either you get hurt in the gym or you get run over on the street by a car. Then you have surgery, you rehab some surgery, and now you start to process over again. And something else happens to you. Okay. Most people are not Walter Payton. They can't play in the NFL for 12 or 13 years and never fail to start a game because of an injury. Most people get hurt when they play at a high level. You want to play at a high level, you want to lift at a high level, you're going to have to push. Pushing gets you hurt. That's the nature of competitive sports. Okay. Now, if you just want to fuck around in the gym from now on, then... Don't ever try for PRs. But that's probably not how you're going to approach the, the training, is it? Well, uh, I've been approaching it. Well, then you have to understand that there's a price to be paid for excellence in everything. You got to take some risks. And what that means is that you're going to risk injury. At some point, you're going to get hurt. You're going to have to learn how to deal with it. But what you know, just what do you want to do? Is that what you're talking about? Is this never getting hurt? Or? Yeah, he wants to not, not, not necessarily not ever get hurt. Try to minimize how to get as strong as possible while minimizing the risk of injury. That was the question in the car right after. There's there's not uh, there's you just you know you're gonna get hurt. It's part of the deal. You're gonna get hurt. If you push, you're gonna get hurt. 
than everybody's experience that pushed. They eventually got hurt. But what most people find is that the ride is worth the risk. You know, when you take 600 out of the rack, that day you're going to do 600 and squat it. Right? You done that yet? And it feels good, you do another rep with it. And then you put it back in the rack. You'll have that from now on. But you won't have it if you don't go through the process of getting strong enough to do it. Right? Do you see Carl Waskey's thousand pound squat double? Is that a the video? Guy? The what? Is that a big bald guy? Chicken? No. Which one was the car? Which one was that? YouTube. Sure. No, we didn't show it this week. Okay. We, we didn't okay. show it. That's my question. We didn't show it. Look it up on YouTube. All right? Whatever happens to Carl Waskey from now on, he's still got that. <coughs> He'll always have that. He'll tell you it was worth it. Most people won't understand that, but maybe you will when you see that. All right? And then things will become more clear. Okay. If you have a client that's in a weight restriction sport, such as boxing or MMA, who right. can't gain weight, will their strength increases be slower? And if it they, their strength increases will stop. Yeah, it will stop. And then what kind of program should you do for them at that point? So you, you should do the program that encourages them to go up a weight class. <laughs> yeah. So the weight always transfers over to I'm strength. the wrong guy, man. Oh. <laughs> to talk about this, you know, <laughs> stay 154 shit. Yeah. I I just, you know. So the weight always counter with the strength. Like you have to be a big you, dude to be Well, big at ways. some point, what is the physiological process of getting strong require? Getting big. Big muscles. Increase in muscle mass cross sectional area. Right. <laughs> which weighs something, yeah. you know. You can't get to zero body fat, right? Yeah. If you're going to continue to get strong, something's got to grow. Muscle has to grow. Muscle weighs something. So you would know? you not so, take a client who doesn't want to gain weight but wants to get stronger? Would you say no? Or what would you do? I, I would... Uh, the, I, you know, people that, that don't want to get big and strong, I just don't deal with that kind of shit. <laughs> it's not my, that's not my business. That's not, what, that's not my demographic. Uh, the worst advice I ever got as a lifter was stay at 220. I'm 5'8". You know, good lifters at 5'8 or 242, 275. You know, that's the worst advice I ever had was stay at 220. I, I really, really, I'm the wrong guy to talk about that staying light shit. That, I, especially if you're dealing with kids. If you're dealing with junior athletes and their coaches are always telling, yeah, you got, I know you're weighing 148 right now and you're 16 and shit, but we really need, we need somebody at 123 and you're it. His parents go along with that. That's bullshit. That coaches have no business telling kids that are trying to grow to lose weight. That costs them down the road. But a lot of those coaches just don't give a shit. Hey, they, their particular team needs this kid. We need somebody at 123. So you're going to go down to 123. And that's just, that's just wrong. <clears throat> That's, that's just wrong. That's just not what. That's not good advice. Would you agree that was good advice? No, that's not good. Advice. It's not good advice at all, is it? Here's a kid trying his best to grow, <laughs> and you're going to malnourish this kid because you need somebody at 123. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit. You know, and, it, and their parents. That's a parenting problem. That really, that's a parenting problem. If you know coach, you know how coaches are. 
and you let your kid be subjected to that kind of abuse, well, you're, that's a parenting problem. So I think, as a general rule, most guys try to fight too light. And I've had this conversation hundreds of times. You know, and what Anthony's saying is absolutely true. Why is it that you think at six foot that you can fight better at 175 than you can at 205? And they'll always say, well, God, if I go up 205, I got to fight guys that are 205. <laughs> I'd rather fight them at 175. Yeah, but you're 175 too, right? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. All right. Have you uh, had any experience uh, applying the program? to any individuals with PTSD? Uh, me? In general. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No, I mean, I mean me. Uh, oh, you, oh, I yeah, see. Sure. Okay. Of course. I've just been, Look, I've, I've by read the time everybody's 30 years old, everybody's got a nasty story. Okay? The fuck over it. The fuck over it. I don't want to hear all that shit. Everybody's got a nasty story. Everybody, right? Everybody's been in a shitty situation. This is this is such bullshit. You know, where are we guaranteed it's going to be an easy deal? Use it. Use the program to keep from going crazy. You know, like lots and lots of other people have. Mature. Get past it. Heal. Focus on something productive. Go that way, not that way. So, yeah. Lots and lots of people have. Um, I guess probably uh, the issue with being last is like every question I get gets uh, sort of Asked ask and answered, so I just had to, um, rather than have a general well, you question. You have to go to question number 17. <laughs> right. right. You check that one up here. Uh, the, um, so I have a question that's a little bit more specific, just my specific situation. So sure. I'm, that's I'm, why we're here. I'm, uh, you know, I've been sedentary for, I guess, like, uh, how old am I? 40, so basically 46 years. So I'll knock that off. So, you know, from, from two on, I'm generally a sedentary life. And actually, right. a lot of it, like, a, and almost actively unhealthy lifestyle, just in my job and stuff I do. Right. Um, so I'm kind of at this point where I don't know a whole lot. So this, other than like a couple months of beginning weight training, you know, a couple months with a coach, a couple months in my own gym, uh, and then this is, and then here, today, uh, today and yesterday was sort of my experience now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, uh, like a friend of mine who is somewhat similar situation, would like to train, we'd like to say, essentially train together. Um, this is, I mean, between the two of us, I'm the only one with anything that resembles experience mm -hmm. insofar as I've got this. I mean, is there any issue with me trying to impart what I'm learning here, assuming that I'm relatively intelligent, taking notes, paying attention to what's going on, acting as sort of a, like a, 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 a pseudo coach, not like a, not a real coach, but sort of, you know, well, you know more about it than he does, right? Right, right. Well, but then if, you're his coach. But if, if, given what I've been I, I don't have enough to, um, I mean, I don't want to. You don't need anything. a certification right. to be a coach. Right. You just need to be able to know more than the guy you're trying to help. Okay. You need to help him. And what do you do as you help him? Right. You learn. I'll be learning myself. Yeah. You learn yourself. Okay. Everybody starts someplace. So a bunch of us start out. We all start someplace. You become the guy that you know. knows more than you are. Okay. Yeah, I just and then when you know more than he does, yeah. if he learns more than you do, he'll be coaching you. Okay. But until that point, help him. Okay. That's how you get better at doing it. Okay. Just like the process we discussed with Aaron, just learn, okay. right? Yeah. Thank you. So I, I always see you wearing that Wayland Court T-shirt. Are, right. are you an Aliens fan or? Building better worlds. Alrighty. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. You know, are, who in here thinks Prometheus is a shitty movie? 
Something's wrong with you, man. Uh, you're, the you are something is wrong. You probably liked Star Trek Beyond, no. didn't you? <laughs> Did you really? Wait, I don't understand what the hell. What was wrong with Prometheus? We don't have the time. What? what? No, we do. The only scene I thought was stupid in the movie was where the biologist is talking to the goddamn little parasite. Oh, but that's just one of it. He gets freaked out with the head being, you know, oh, it's a, it's a head. And then he, oh, it's, a, it's obviously an angry alien. Oh, I'm just going, hey, how you doing? It was awful. He gets lost with a map. You're one of these people. <coughs> you're one of these people that just can't be entertained, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, Rip, he's, the, he's the plot hole guy. Too many plot holes. Too many plot holes. What the hell? It's a trillion dollar you know, mission, and we just hire people. We don't tell them what we're going to do. Too many plot holes. We're just going to land on the planet. We don't look around. We just open our helmets. I think it's fine. It should be fine. Really? There's no argument. <laughs> you can't. No. <laughs> There's no plot holes. Plot hole guy. All right, so what hey, movie? Hey, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. If we got the, here's my, my, my belief. If we got the four-hour-long Ridley Scott version of that movie, all your plot holes would be... I believe that's I, I'm true. I'm with you on that. Yeah, be, I believe that's true, because every done. Ridley Scott reissue that's the full-length deal, it's about twice as good, is the, there's the theatrical release, right? Did you... Uh, you see Kingdom of Heaven? Did you see the long version of Kingdom of Heaven? Don't think I did see that. Well, you fucked up. <laughs> what about the, Get the long uh, version of Kingdom of Heaven. What about the Blade Runner? When they extended I, that one. It was. It's a great, great top five of all time science it. fiction movie. But I didn't necessarily like the whole unicorn part. It was like, what is the it? what? The un in the Blade Runner? Unicorn? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's like Thank four you. or five different versions of uh, Blade Runner. Uh, well, the one is called. I've just got through watching last week's called the Final Cut. Ridley Scott's preferred it's the version. Cut? It might be the, without the, the narration. Without the narration, but right. then they added this this whole subplot of the unicorn. He has dreams, and it's a unicorn running through the forest. And that's it ties into when he leaves the the origami unicorn behind. Right. It, right. it ties into that, and it, it never went anywhere. It never made any sense. Well, that's, that's because I, so I probably forgot it, and I enjoyed the movie anyway. <laughs> So did you, but you didn't like Prometheus. No. So did you like Alien? Loved it. Did you like Aliens? Yes. Did you like the third one? What would no, they call the third? Not really. It was all right. It was I thought right. it was pretty good. It was okay. <coughs> the three, four, the three, the two, like uh, uh, Firefly almost. It was done by Joss Whedon. Uh, which one was done? The third one? The third one. Oh, I don't remember that. I have, to look, I have to look that up again. Yeah, that was a, I thought that was a pretty yeah, damn good movie. <laughs> they kind of resembled the whole, you know, Firefly ensemble. So he said that was his kind of test pen, test subject for the whole part. Well, so did you like uh, Winter Soldier? Yeah. But you didn't like Prometheus? Nope. Man. Loved Winter Soldier. <laughs> So, what about this? What about Star Trek Beyond? Uh, you know, I haven't even seen it. Well, I watched two thirds of it question. and took it out of the machine. I said, I can't. Fuck! I hadn't got unlimited time here. <laughs> time is precious. I can't. I can't sit here and have my goddamn intelligence insulted one more time. You know. As, as God, a, that's a, awful. That was so much awful. Abrams, really. It just, a J. J. Abrams needs to be euthanized. God. <laughs> <laughs> he, did not, he did not direct Beyond. Yeah, he didn't direct. It. It was no, the, he directed the first one, it was the first which is worse than maybe Beyond. Oh, the second, I thought the second one. What was that called? Into Darkness. I thought that was pretty good. <coughs> But the first one was awful, yeah. and this third one was unwatchable. It was just unwatchable. If you hadn't seen it, don't just... I'll do myself a favor and not. I've heard that uh, oh, X-Men Apocalypse, <laughs> X-Men Apocalypse is allegedly unwatchable, too. I've heard that, 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 too. I've heard
Yeah, that's 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 what I've heard. Everybody the, everybody posted on the movie thread said it's unwatchable. How many times have you seen Prometheus? Just once. Just once. Yeah, watch it. No. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Watch it again. I'll do it for you. I'll do it. Watch it again. Just suspend your disbelief and just watch the damn thing again. If he comes out with a director's cut, which is four hours long, I'll watch that one. I, you know, that may be happening here pretty quick. I'll bet he's going to get this, the, the one after Prometheus, out and then release the director's cut to Prometheus. I like but Man Kingdom of Heaven... That was Ridley Scott? Director's Cut. Yeah, it's Thomas Ridley, Ridley Scott. I like that one. No, that was, that was the brother. That was the to that was Tony Scott. Oh, is that Tony yeah. Scott? Oh, it, looks okay. like a, it looks like a music video with a cut every two seconds. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's awful. Kind of, that kind of shit is a, is a, sub, a substitute for a script. Do, 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 do. Uh, the, second, the second Bond movie. The second what? The second Bond movie was that way. Uh, yeah, uh, Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace. Jesus Christ, you just got to fast forward through the chase. See, because it's unwatchable if you try to watch that. It's just unwatchable. Uh the movie itself is okay, but the, that kind of direction is just, cinematography is horrible. I can't stand it. And that's what substitutes now for the script, I that's guess. Like the old, you seem like a reasonable guy. <laughs> <laughs> you do seem like a reasonable human being, you know. So I think Prometheus, you, you need to watch It'll that again. It'll be my cross. You read, you, right, now, you, did, you read too many reviews. No, I, I didn't read any. I was so excited. Oh, I think it's fashionable to hate Prometheus. That's what I, I think. I hated it before it was fashionable. I think it's fashionable to hate it, and I don't think that you're being honest with yourself. <laughs> Did it come to Jesus moment? Right. Right. I think you need to sit down, watch it again, and you think to yourself while you're doing it, Rip and Nick want you to do this. <laughs> And I think you'll be rewarded for your time. I'll give it a shot. So, did you not see Kingdom of Heaven at all? I think. No, the, the, I didn't see that one. That was, uh, with that ridiculous Orlando Bloom yeah, is in yeah. it. You know, sometimes a movie trans transcends its star. This is one of those times. <laughs> not hard. No. What is Orlando Bloom? What's the heaviest he's ever weighed? 160? <laughs> 148. Yeah. It is most massive. He was 148. Most massive. God. <laughs> that was in his elven years. When he was an elf. <laughs> the ears suck. Like <laughs> the ears weigh a lot. I just don't. I don't really care for him. But it's that's a great movie. It is. It's a great, great movie. The director's cut has an entire. It's another 30 minutes worth of material, and a completely new plot line that's not in the first one and once you see it you'll say oh now that, that now that makes sense over here yeah you need to see it that's a hell of a movie hell of a good movie i've seen the the regular cut not the director's cut. you need to see the director's cut